This video will go through the mining example using the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Here we have wanting to uh, find out what the mean and the standard deviation are for the mining example. And so here, remember the mean and standard deviation formulas here. So for the mining example, uh, we know that we surveyed 603 participants, so that's our n value. And we know that 54% of them, or a proportion of 0 0.54, said they supported mining. And so our mean value then would be 326. We need to know what n and p are too for the standard deviation. And so here we get 603 times 0 0.54 times 1 minus 0 0.54. Be sure to take the square root of all of that underneath the square root sign. And that's going to equal 12.24. So we've got some parameters now for our mining example. And so we're going to go back to the z table for the binomial approximation to the normal. And so remember what the z distribution looks like. Let's just draw it for just for the sake of having to draw it. Our mean value would be where uh, mu sub x is 326. We're interested in the question of knowing how many people more than 350 support mining from our survey. And so this value we can think of as 350. We know it's greater than 326, so it's going to be on the right side of the z distribution. And so we're really interested in knowing what's the area under the curve represented by everything greater than 350. Well, to do that, we can go back to the z-score calculation. And so remember the z-score calculation was z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. And so here the value x that we're interested in is 350 minus the mean value we calculated at 326 divided by 12.24, our standard deviation. And when we do that, we get 1.96. And so 1.96 is the value of the z-score for the calculation here. If we were to put that back on the table, you can imagine this would be a value where z equals 0, right at the mean. Our value when x is 350, right here, on the z distribution would be 1.96. And so now we've got a value of z, but we want to turn that into a probability. So this is one we'll look up at the z table, or we could use our software to, to calculate it. Remember the z table will give you everything to the left of some value. And so we can say that the probability that x is less than or equal to 350 is that value we find on the t table. And that value turns out to be 0. Point, uh, sorry, that value on the z table, not the t table here, the z table. That value turns out to be 0. 0.975. But now remember, we're not interested in everything less than 350. We're interested in everything greater than 350, everything to the right side of 350. And so what we can do then is calculate the complement of this probability. And so to do that, uh, we can find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 350 as 1 minus that probability. Or instead of uh, 0 0.975, the complement of that would be 0 0.025. And so now we've got the, the answer to our question. How many people, what's the probability that 350 people or more support mining in Minnesota based on our survey? Uh, we could say something like this. The probability that 350 or more participants in the survey support mining in Minnesota is 0 0.025 as our final answer. And so this is how we can begin to think about as we sample people in surveys, if we have enough of a sample, we can use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution to run a lot of good inference about our data.